re-released seven times, spanning across six different consoles, and yet here I am, to bring all of you succulent craft singles out there the most ambitious crossover ever imagined. Skyrim is a game of many choices. You can decide your specific playstyle and attack obstacles the way you want to. Shouts only, done before. Want to play as a gourd and reclaim Skyrim for yourself in a divine intervention? Easy. But can you beat Skyrim with a Nintendo Power Glove? Originally released in 1989, this controller was made for the NES. Many claimed that this dollar store Thanos gauntlet not only barely worked back then, but also made many want to uninstall their brain after using it. If we can hypothetically get this controller to work with our PC, can we use this primitive piece of absolute dog feces to brutally fist Skyrim and take home this W? Before we start our modern day version of erotic asphyxiation, you little coomers are probably sitting there in your mighty bean underwear wondering how we will even begin to get this device to work with our computer. Don't worry. I got you guys. Put your pussy on the phone and I'll give you the rundown on how this all works. Operation My Girlfriend is on her way to the bathroom and I can't remember if I flushed or not is now in full effect. Thanks to my man Kevin and me being the merciless and ruthless capitalist that I am, he was able to build me a PC power glove adapter. $120 and a foot job later, Kevin was able to effortlessly make the device that will fund our masochism this run. With this device connected to the glove, I can register the glove as a mouse and keyboard. Board, giving me the upper hand on Thanos, because even though that boy got some ass on him, I'm sure his glove can't be used to control his PC. With everything set, there are only two rules this run. The power glove can be the only thing used to control the game, unless I'm naming my character, and absolutely no sneak build. With the rules set, grab a pack of Dunkaroos and sit back. Maybe you'll even like that smash button to help support the channel and my mental stability, because it took me three fu- with an original Slim Jim slapped onto each finger of the controller, which will soon be apparent to you cuties and my will at an all-time high, will I be able to Thanos snap the treacherous Alduin, or will I experience oh pain so horrendous God. that I'd rather sit on 10 number 2 pencils? Let's find out. With Power Glove working, we began on our journey, and was met with the cuisine for the luckiest of men. I have absolutely no idea or why this was happening, but I did not enjoy the experience. Mankind is a disgusting plague on this gentle planet, and this right here, gentlemen, is proof. After a quick restart and coming back from that literal roller coaster of emotion, we got off the wagon and I chose my race. For this run, I decided that I would refrain from any mods, as that would take away from the immersive experience that is the prolific story of Skyrim. So I decided to choose the only viable race for a run like this, the Gourds. I made this decision to mimic living in a higher plane of existence, both spiritually and physically. Skyrim belonged to the Gourds, and I was here to help them reclaim it. My Gourd was named named after the great Pyro from TF2, a channel member of mine that is possibly the only person to pass an STD test that he didn't study for. Just as a year is equivalent to 365 days of disappointment, my existence is equivalent to a rat getting stuck in a mouse trap. Fortunately, death is a preferable oh, alternative bullshit. to playing with this glove, so I was okay with what was about to happen until he arrived. Oh hey. This is what I was foreshadowing at the beginning of the video. I was a man, a warrior, branding what was a Thanos gauntlet with Slim Jims attached to it. Right there, down, right there, down. In a poetic gesture, I strapped this meat to my fingers to act not only as my infinity stones, but also as a means to counter the macho man's extremist demands. You got a tight little man pussy on you, don't you? As I was set free, so was my will to live. If my fetal alcoholism and destabilized emotional well-being wasn't enough, this glove was here to add to it. And to add to this shit all over Senza's chest session, due to the latency from the glove to the sensor bars, my sensitivity was all over the place. I understand that this footage is vile and disgusting, almost rivaling mommy makeout days level of disgusting, but I need to show you all the truth, despite the cringe this footage will bring. After witnessing a brethren fight with the intellect and dexterity of a vegetable, I sided with Rayloff and was ready to show the Imperials a practice that I have long, long forgotten. For those curious, if I flex my finger, my weapon will swing. The power glove is basically just a raw, uncut, uncircumcised version of a Wii remote. So if in the off chance I flex my finger for mistake while an NPC so happens to be in front of me, I may or may not be a wanted man Stop. and killed for what I have done. My Veggie Tales brother and I moved forward, and must I say, we worked stupendously as a team. As he whipped out his cock, coming and slapping any Imperial scum in our way, I dealt with getting used to this controller. After ameliorating the situation, I joined Rayloff and took part in his disobedience of the Geneva Conventions. Doing so brought me a meeting with the Spider-Man Council, but since they were the inferior, non-Sam Raimi version,
version of Spider-Man, they also took part in the marriage of their lives and death. The open world engulfed me, and it was time to cancel Alduin. Enlightenment from the Warrior Stone was called upon, and then I realized that things were jamming, but we were missing the peanut butter. Although I was threatened and touched by a wheelbarrow, just like that one weird uncle everyone has, this was not the peanut butter I was looking for. I began my trek up the Bleak Falls Barrow, and besides the occasional arm cramp, it wasn't too bad. But simplicity with this glove is a metaphorical concept that seemed foreign, and just the fact that I almost died oh no. because of my sensitivity made me realize that this was not going to be a good time. With a sweet little maneuver that may look unfathomable to the eye of an ordinary gamer, I powered through my inventory, healed myself, and proceeded to hit them with that 10-piece special. Inside Bleak Falls, I pushed my way through and met my match. This bandit overlord was here to ruin my day and the lore of the Power Glove anime. But after a couple of tries, he romanced his deserved demise. I took out the terrorist Spider-Man that was keeping Arvel hostage, saved Arvel, and then made him commit stop of breathe with a few flicks of my index finger. This is where the difficulty began to steadily increase. Not because the Draugr were powerful beings that pot roast your ass even on the easiest difficulty, or because I locked myself in a quick save death loop, but because mobility was impossible with this controller. My only option while attacking was to merely stand still and hope to God that I had enough damage to take out my enemies while they pasteurized my breast milk. A few attempts on a group of joggers later, I was blessed by the heavens with a two-handed greatsword. My first puzzle was exclusively easy with this controller, and the Draugr overlord ahead became the sole proprietor to a greatsword butt plug. The Dragon Tails Dragonstone was now in my possession, and it was time to make my way to Whiterun. Infrastructure is in shambles for this run. Either my controller barely wanted to work, or I was faced with the hazards that threatened my very dragonborn livelihood. Like this wolf taking advantage of the fact that I was a cripple, or being randomly executed in Whiterun for being one of the very few in this sentient vegetable minority. The Jarl of Whiterun was pleased to see that I had obtained the Dragonstone already, and he asked me to outstretch the bounds of my autism and see if I could take out my very first dragon. I didn't want to, but here in this vegetable minority discriminating institution, no was not an option. There I was, sword in hand and power glove securely fastened. I knew that no matter what, this was going to go terribly wrong. And that, you little cutie idiots, it did. Again and again, Molmanir roasted me with the nuclear yield of a homeless man swamp ass, and I just had to take it. I was faced with the moral dilemma. Do I hide and let these men do all of the work for me, or do I grow a couple of inches on my dick and man up? I needed guidance, and there was only one person that I could call. One person that shared the same religious beliefs and masochism as I did. Mitten Squad. Come on. Come on, pick up the f Oh, hey Paul, what's going on? Yo, what's going on? Hey, yeah, god. Uh I'm fighting Molmanir, the very first dragon in Skyrim with a with a power glove, and I uh, I need some tips, man. I need some help. Okay, well, let's make sure you've got the basics covered. You have Slim Jims, right? There's no way you'd try to fight a dragon without Slim Jims. Yeah, yeah, dude, totally, of course. I got the Slim Jims strapped. We're covered on that front. Good, good. What about buckets? How many buckets you got? What? What? Buckets are an essential part of the Skyrim experience. How many buckets do you have? No, dude, listen. I need help taking him down. You have probably done this more times than I've seen myself naked. How do you- Senza, you're starting to make me mad. Do you have any buckets or not? I don't- I'm not even sure what- Look, man, I can't help you if you can't help yourself. You're on your own. No- Paul. Paul, dude, come on! Dude, come on! Just like an aging man's womb broom, this controller refused to function correctly. My life was miserable, short, and full of carpal tunnel, but dealing a bit of damage and hoping to god he didn't retaliate was the play. And when the moment arose, I took the gam- and when the moment arose, I took the gamble and did what any rational thinking gourd would do. I had slain my very first dragon. The Jarl quickly knew of the W I had obtained and awarded me a human to join me on my travels. Although these creatures do agitate me. You need to get the fuck down, yeah. Thank you. Holy crap, man. And traveling with her would carry a highly unwelcomed price. Lydia was going to be nothing but my champion. Getting the high Rothgar with this power glove is enough to get your 
do-it-yourself medically prescribed for antibiotic hemorrhoid cream. The power glove has two functions, motion control and gamepad control. Motion controls only detect where I look and when I flex my finger. The gamepad controls my walking and jumping. Unfortunately, while using the gamepad, I couldn't get the sprint button to work while being pressed, thus making us lose not only the I'm fast as fast boy fuck. romance option and forcing us to walk for the rest of the game. I fast traveled to Pelagia Farm and began on my journey. The occasional wolf needed to be exterminated for their disgusting, erotic fetish that they had for the gourds, and I took up the moral process of choosing whether Talsgar should live or not. Monotony and an all-around pain in my favorite testicle are the perfect words to describe this journey. I won't lie, climbing to this mountain did involve a bit of save scumming, but any and all sins that I commit should be absolved while wearing this holy piece of equipment. In due time, and after dealing with the troll that I totally killed and definitely didn't run past, I made it to the group of simps that congregated at the throat of the world. Secluding themselves from the rest of civilization, these simps are of another tier. In their dystopia, I was their twitch thought and my power glove and I held a monopoly over this prestigious title. As you can see here in Evidence Locker 32A, when I pressed my right d-pad button on the power glove, they accepted defilement and they longed for it. These simp benefactors were vital to how this anime was going to play out. They taught me whirlwind sprint, which will be a great deal later on in this run, and after a bit of chit chat, I was sent off to a dungeon to find something these men held dear. Lydia and I set forth from the western watchtower, and it wasn't too far of a walk. I just had to deal with a few bandits that worked for NASA, and a few wolves. Eventually, my glove and I arrived at Ustengrav, and we were coming for the cause, but staying for that sweet, sweet Draugr ass. Being the trained gourd that I was, I was able to push my way through, and even after mistakenly hitting a button, I was able to regain my composure, a technique I learned from my Borderlands 3 challenge run. Although I was an abortion that unfortunately lived, my swordsmanship was exceptional, and these Draugrs had exclusive rights to my sword and power glove. After being distracted for a small bit, I made it to the holding room to find out that the ancient Steve Harvey fleshlight they were looking for was missing. This was tragic, but I knew of someone that could possibly tell me the whereabouts of its location. I struggled with the fast travel map, but eventually, by God's grace, made it to Riverwood, and from there, discussed the situation with Belle Delphine. She wanted me to prove that I was a dragonborn, which meant that I had to do things that I didn't want to, but her word was martial law. We made the trek to the dragon burial site, and besides being uncomfortable, I was able to refrain from filling my adult diapers. Alduin, the king of machos, revived his fellow dragon, and it was my time to shine, to show Mrs. Delphine that I was a man of my words, and that clapping dragons was something I was truly passionate about. My last encounter with the dragon didn't end very well, but fortunately, Reggie was looking down upon me on this very day. So Lochnir focused on Lydia as I cha-cha slid into every single orifice he had with my sword. Killing a dragon in one try with this glove is like being edged for hours and finally releasing. But even though the battle had technically been won, Delphine wanted another task to be done, and this one was not going to be simple. From Ustengrav, I made my way to Solitude, and then the Winking Skeever. Besides slapping poor Malborn here with my death stick, it wasn't too hard getting to this point, and off this little gourd went to his respective environment. A well-needed social gathering where we all stand six feet apart. I needed info on the Thalmor, and now you may be thinking, Senza, this part will be impossible with the power glove. This challenge is over. Well, <laughs> I hate you, and you're ugly. Now stop pissing me off before I kiss your forehead and put you to sleep. Here's the plan, boys and girls. I understand that I don't have much healing, especially for the amount of enemies that I will be facing here. After staging my distraction, there is a whole kitchen area full of food. This will be our saving grace. This will be what gets us... This will be what the superiority God f <laughs> the superiority of this power glove will forever be memorialized to these Thalmor, and so it will be in my heart when the food I stole hit differently and saved my ass from getting karate clapped by these heathen. Although I had many troubles with sensitivity and this area alone, I was able to overcome this obstacle and do something on a level not even Gandhi thought would be viable. The food in that kitchen was just enough to help me survive the final fight, and victory filled the air. 
just like a fart enclosed in a windowless room. It was now time to find Esbern, a member of an ancient group called the Blades, and with my passport set, I set off to Riften to kiss a couple of hot boys in the name of Talos. At this point, I was starting to become a seasoned power glove wielder, which was vital if I planned to use it to topple Doom Eternal in the final episode of this saga. Having played this game many times, doing the actual quest to find his location was not needed. I emerged into the ratways and Lydia and I came to fulfill these enemies' sexual fantasies, one where a cripple completely shit all over them. My passage through these tunnels was clearly unwelcome, but I took it into my own hands and whacked away. Delving deeper, Lydia and I were ganked by a few Thalmor, and what resulted was a discarded afterbirth of a bad idea. I thought I could sit back, let Lydia do something for once, and enjoy the show. She died my champion fighting to protect my glove, and I did nothing about it. I reset a save and eventually found Esbern. While discussing the severity of the situation, random and animate objects decided to stroke the f out and the three amigos went to escape the sewers. I spent the better half of a day down here in the dungeons. We made it out of there, I chatted with Bell, and then realized that Esbern was 100% Darwin Award material. Did you say something? <laughs> My poor boy Esbern is suffering dementia. Dear lord. Severe, severe dementia. The squad and I set out to Alduin's wall. I won't bore you with the specifics of what went down, but from the western watchtower, the hike wasn't too bad. It turned out the submissiveness of Andre the Giant was not on a level that I could handle. But around 20 minutes later, I arrived at Alduin's wall, faced damnation when my glove decided to shut Man, down for a minute and made my way inside. A few more deaths decided they wanted me within the confines of this dungeon, and at this point, I was starting to contract severe autism and a new form of chronic Tourette's. Yeah, okay. Okay, dude. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. But as I like to say, with great power comes great power. AKA, I whipped out my imaginary gourd micro penis and showed the seal what I was packing, which fortunately got us inside. Alduin's wall spoke of deplorable and evil tales, almost as evil as when my mother found my 256 gig anime and porn USB drive and actually threw it in a sink full of water. But the wall spoke of how this glove and I were going to save the world. I grabbed I grabbed Dragon's Bane and my passage was made up to the throat of the world. Towards the peak, this poor goat found out the cold hard truth that you can't consent to being Thanos snapped by my power glove. And I met with Parthenax to discuss the removal of Alduin from this existence. It was time to find an Elder Scroll and boys was I afraid. After a few well needed stress relieving exercises with this glove, I made my way to Keen's Grove and from there took a carriage to Winterhold. Showing the College of Winterhold the anomaly that is a humanoid vegetable doing magic, I was allowed inside and discovered the location of the Elder Scroll. After Septimus told me the exact location, I eventually made it there and was ready. This place was going to have my butt cheeks spread and pounding away like the barbarian it was, but there was nothing I could do but be a man about it. Immediately inside, my nightmare became a reality. Just pushing through this place, I had more dick inside of me than a One Direction groupie. My fight with the heathen inside of this place had me on the edge of my boners, but eventually, after many deaths, I was able to kill them and waltzed right past the Centurion with my power glove. Inside Blackreach, my ass was looking like a goddamn snack to these visually stunted Falmer. Don't get me wrong, I totally should have made a retaliatory effort, but I just wanted the hell out of this place. With Lexicon in position, I committed the cardinal sin of googling how to actually get to the Elder Scroll, and with it in my possession, it was time for my glove and I to take out Alduin. At the throat of the world, I shimmied through my inventory and read the scroll in the time rip. This scroll showed me the true potential of Alduin the Macho Man and his goons. Explosions, fire, and really shitty acting filled that vision. Like, I've seen better acting in amateur porn videos than that shit. But it was time, and I had now entered the Salty Spittoon. With this power glove, this Alduin fight really drove me to the edge. It wasn't even the fact that I was lacking in the right armor or level to kill him. It was my mobility with this controller. And that little hemorrhoid had a skill that made meteors fall from the sky which had the damage equivalent of getting your genitals stuck in your pants zipper. I was subject to the tortures that Alduin deemed fit for a gourd, and this was just bordering on sadistic. 
For this fight, I had no food to rely on, so my only option was a level 1 healing spell. No, that's a lot of health. I could now do a bit of damage whenever he landed and run off healing after he took out 50% of my health. This technique was getting me there, but the perverse and erotic Alduin wasn't having it. That motherfucker got off to seeing me die, even more than the bestiality animation mods he had installed on his copy of Skyrim. In a response to the pain I had endured, I made a call that I probably shouldn't have. I started to suspect that while you were playing as the Gord race, armor means absolutely nothing. The Crimes Against Skyrim mod allows you to change your race whenever you please, so I decided to do so, and test the theory changing myself to the Red Guard race. Whether it was placebo or not, I did have a bit of trouble with this fight against Alduin, but eventually, I won the battle. Not only against Alduin, but also against the treacherous UI inventory screens while using the Power Glove. This was massive, a giant win in this current arc of the anime. He was injured and fled the scene, to a remote area where he could rest and produce so many Slim Jim advertisements that it would be far from sustainable by the likes of myself. Although I have displeased the Gord Empire, I decided that I must finish this run as a Gord. After taking quick trips to each of the major holds and having to deal with the monotony of using fast travel with this glove, I sat the major leaders down and discussed the truce. With everyone on the same side, it was time to find my ticket into Sovereign Guard and finally finish off Alduin for good. There was a pretty good bargain on a dragon that was down for some of that naughty little deed many call treason. And after calling his name, I bolted the door shut on my BDSM dungeon. No one could hear his screams or even mine. Odaving agreed to take me to his leader, and off we went to kill him and end this tyranny over us troglodytes. Skyrim, the quintessential RPG where the world is your metaphorical oyster, but your boy is out here roleplaying as a vegetable and whirlwind sprinting across the map. This was where that dragon shout came into clutch, so you can bet that sweet little inverted belly button of yours that I was going to skip past as many enemies as I could. I made sure my healing spell was toggled and prepared myself for any cacti rectal insertions these enemies were ready to give me. Inside this ancient tomb, I had a bit of trouble, but their effort to take me down and my pain was keeping me in this fight. With the hand of a friend of mine that against his own will was unionized. Bro, these are like fucking second grader, like fucking Listen, man, TV. I know, but your like, assistance is needed. Uh, <laughs> oh, god damn it. I solved all of the puzzles, convinced the Draugr overlord that my life was more valuable than his would ever be, and Whirlwind sprinted past the Dragon Priest into the portal to Sovereign Guard. This was the final run. In Sovereign Guard, we were already off to a bad start. Pushing my way through, I slowly cleared the smoke and made it to the gates of the Hall of Valor. Sun guarded the gates, and I needed to 1v1 him in order to get inside. Little did he know that I have achieved dangerous levels of Chad with this power glove. And that didn't really matter, because he twirled his sweaty nose on my chocolate starfish. But even his masculinity can be countered. Stepping into the lake beside him oddly shuts off his AI, thus letting me hit him with the fire breath dragon shout, giving me that W. Inside the hall, I convinced the homies that Alduin was in the wrong hood, and we all stepped outside to blast him. The boys and I shotgunned farts that sounded like they could nearly flick mud, and the final battle began. This was a difficult one. 48 minutes and 33 deaths, literally running around like a chicken with its tits cut off. But not even Alduin and his macho strength could stop me. The play was as before, to deal damage and run around healing myself, save scumming whenever I made progress on his health bar, and in due time, the boys hit him hard, and I delivered the final blow. That was it, boys. The dragon sang, and a gourd fulfilled his prophecy, saving Skyrim and putting an end to Macho Man's tyranny. You can beat the Elder Scrolls Skyrim with a Nintendo Power Glove. It was difficult, and honestly, probably more difficult than the Borderlands 3 challenge. This Power Glove series has not yet come to an end, though. I have one more game to topple before I actually hit the big red one and achieve all of my Infinity Stones. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you made it to the end comment hashtag mud flicking so i can heart your comment thank you to the diaper booty chairman for funding this video and thank you to all of you beautiful creatures for watching see you next video you cutie idiots